Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Advanced Excel for Data Analysis course. Here we'll look at our switches alternatives. What's a switch? A switch is simply an on off, yes or no, or choose among different things. It's your main sensitivity for which you will use to then say, hey listen, take this scenario or this scenario, use this set of numbers or this set of numbers. There are three main formulas that we will look into. Actually, we'll look at four different techniques to properly and efficiently incorporate switches and sensitivity analysis into our models. We'll look at three functions and another fourth way of doing things. The first function we'll look at is the if statement. Now, let me ask you guys a question. How many times have you seen a huge, humongous, long nested if statement with like 10 if statements in there? Where you have like, if this equals this, then do this. Otherwise, if this equals this, then do that. Otherwise, if not, then do this, then if, if, if. You need like 10 nested if statements in there, right? Come on, raise your hands. We've all seen it. In fact, we may even be guilty ourselves of doing it. Well, to that I would say to you, don't exaggerate. Don't embellish because it can only nest up to seven if statements, not ten. Gotcha. Now, the first case I want to look at is the if statement. The if statement is fairly straightforward. It basically says, it allows you to choose between different items. It says, if a logical test, so this is what you will evaluate. If this logical test that you're evaluating is true, then do this. It doesn't have to be a value, it could be a formula. If it's false, or in other words, what they say, else. So if this, then do this. If this is true, then do this, else, do that. The problem is, if you have more than one scenario, you say, well, if this is or more than two, if, well, if this says yes, then do this. If it says no, then do What if it says maybe? Then you need a third scenario that then says, well, if it's false, then you have to evaluate now if it's true, false, or if it's a maybe. So the difficulty with if is, first of all, this is very difficult to code when you have more than one if scenario. Difficult to code, the syntax is not straightforward. You have to watch out for your commas and all your parentheses and whatnot. And secondly, you only really have up to eight options because you only have up to seven nested if statements. So on the right-hand side, you see the pros fairly straightforward for the advantages. It's easy to code and the simple logic for only and only two cases. When it's more than two, it's very non-transparent. You're only limited to seven nested if loops. Now, what's the alternative? Choose formula. I will show you the formula for choose and then fully explain it. And if you've taken our advanced financial modeling, the variety of courses there, you've already seen the choose statement in action. So I will wait until I show you the formula down below on the rest of the spreadsheet and then explain fully how the choose syntax works because it's very easy. It's very easy to understand once I show it, I promise you. And the only downside is limited to 29 options. Think about that. The choose statement only allows you to have 29 options. One day, yes, your boss will ask you, give me 30 options. And before you stick your middle finger at them, what you just say is, hey, no worries, I'll wrap an if statement around a nest, uh, uh, I'll wrap an if statement around a choose statement and instantaneously I've got 58 options. So I've got 58 options. And you say, ha, give me 40 options. Well, don't, but fine. Now, the offset statement is yet another statement that is also quite nifty, and I'll explain the syntax when we get there with this example that we have in the scenarios here. And this offset is very good. It's very good because you literally have unlimited number of cases that you can do. Literally, you're limited to the number of rows and columns that Excel has. Now, you are limited to 65,536 rows down and 256 columns across. And in Excel version 2007, so I guess here's a freebie plug from Microsoft Excel 07, I think there's something like, uh, I don't know how many, 10,000 plus columns now and a million or so records going down the row. So you literally truly have unlimited number of cases. I'm sure that'll make your Excel file very big. And the answer to your question is, yes, have I personally ran out of room in Excel in a worksheet? The answer, of course, is yes, okay? So therefore, having all those additional columns and rows would be quite handy. So that's the advantage of offset and probably the only advantage. But the disadvantage of offset is that it's extremely tedious to code and impossible, not hard to check, it's impossible to fully audit. Okay, so that is the difficulty of offset. Let's take a look now and take some of what we just said and actually incorporate it into scenarios. So let's take a look at this. So I'm in the section here, and you can do one of two things, folks. 
I'm going to be jumping up and around on this page, and you can either just simply print this page out because you already have this in your Excel file, or you can follow along and watch your screen as I'm doing it. But since I'm going to, uh, you know, have to zoom out occasionally so I can see all the star references and demonstrate to you what each star reference is doing, you may actually end up wanting to just full screen this and look at a printout, just follow along and then watch it twice. So in this case here, I got the following scenarios. I'm trying to build, I don't know, a very simple projection model. And I want to know, what's my revenue growth assumption and my EBITDA margin, let's say. And I have three cases here. Case one, two, three. You can call each of these cases, I don't know, uh, downside case, uh, base case or management case, and uh, upside or high case, whatever. You get the point. And I want to bring in the following growth rates and margins. And I'm telling Excel, this is my set of inputs. But I still have to tell Excel, hey, actually use one of them. So I'll say case one. So now, because I have case one selected, I want... Excel to bring in those growth rates, 10%, and that margin of 5%. So let's take a look at how you could do this quickly with the if statement. And here, again, I'm going to have to zoom out just, oh, no, I should be good over here. 